happy to hear you, everybody in the, in, in the world, and particularly in Europe, for this second uh, webinar on challenges in the management of small cell lung carcinoma, and particularly on extensive disease. We're speaking of uh, treatments, prophylaxis, treatment of brain metastasis. And our uh, main speaker will be Torsten Bloom from Germany. And Dragana Jovanovic will, will be our discutants uh, from uh, uh, Poland. So, uh, Torsten, when you want, you can begin or have a short introduction or Dragana. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, uh, well, um, then I think uh, you will see the um, talk soon. So first of all, very warm welcome from me uh, here from Berlin. Um, happy um, that we have a second webinar on extensive disease and small cell uh, lung cancer. And I'm also very happy to introduce to you Professor Dragana Jovanovic uh, from uh, Belgrade, uh, Serbia. You know her already from the first webinar, part one, uh, limited uh, disease on small cell lung cancer. And um, again, um, I think we will clearly benefit from your um, questions. Please type them in into the um, chat. Um, Jack Katranel and Dragana Jovanovic uh, will handle those uh, questions and we will have uh, some parts, uh, some structure uh, for, for the talk at, at the end of each part. There, there will be a chance to have some interactive discussion with you and of course with uh, Dragana and Jack, just as we did at um, the last time. So maybe Ali, uh, I would be grateful if you could open the talk for me and then we can already start. Please, Thorsten, click on the screen once. I did. Again? Uh, yes, again, please. There we go. I just want to activate the pointer. Um, do you know, Ali, uh, where's the, the pointer? Is it here? Okay, sorry, just having some problems. Okay, so we will just start and you should see the full screen soon. There we go. Okay, here are my conflicts uh, of interest. Um, assessed um, the topic today are the challenges in the management of uh, small cell lung cancer. And today uh, we will focus mainly on extensive uh, disease and small cell um, lung cancer. So um, here you have a brief overview of what we will cover and discuss um, today. Um, so there uh, will be clearly a uh, focus on systemic uh, therapies in extensive disease, small cell lung cancer. Um, that's because they are the mainstay of uh, therapy. And with the introduction of immunotherapies, there has been also a real breakthrough, um, just as we have seen some more years ago in non-small cell lung cancer. We will also focus on radiotherapy. There are two aspects, as you can see here, and uh, you will see and learn or already know um, that both are also important in the uh, proper treatment and management of extensive disease um, small cell lung cancer. Another focus will be on relapse um, therapy, and we will briefly touch uh, the other points that you can uh, see here. So let's start with the systemic um, therapies. And um, as you may know, for many decades, um, 
um, systemic therapy was the, the only uh, option um, to treat small cell uh, lung cancer and the standard chemotherapy uh, regimen for many decades has been cisplatin plus uh, etoposide. Um, um, as you can see here, there has been uh, a, a very uh, thorough um, systematic review by uh, the group from uh, Brussels Institute uh, Jules Baudet around um, Jean-Paul uh, Scullier and um, Thierry um, Bergmans. It's already from 2000 and um, this meta-analysis covered the period from 1980 to 1998. Uh, it included 36 trials Altogether, uh, almost 7,200 patients um, that were included into randomized control um, trials. Um, the authors grouped um, the various uh, randomized control trials into five groups. Uh, in our context, three groups are relevant, as you can see here. So they made a comparison of cisplatin versus no cisplatin etoposide treatment. First group, only one um, um, RCT. Um, more interesting is the mono etoposide group versus no cisplatin uh, and etoposide um, uh, systemic uh, chemotherapy only uh, treatment, as you can see here in the pool hazard ratio at the very bottom of this, this slide. Um, um, there was a significant uh, finding favoring monoetoposide um, um, treatment. And, and this is one reason why it has become a standard of care in, in those times. Uh, you can see um, less um, um, RCTs in group three, but um, this group uh, covered cisplatin etoposide as a combination compared um, to other chemotherapy uh, uh, regimens without uh, cisplatin uh, etoposide. And again, um, there is a um, positive um, correlation, as you can see in the hazard uh, ratio with a, um, a reduction of 43% uh, uh, favoring this combination. Um, there are also other combinations that you can think of when uh, you would like to introduce uh, chemotherapy alone in small cell lung cancer extensive disease. So one question that there has been also for many years is the question, instead of cisplatin, can we use carboplatin, which may be more favorable for older patients, for uh, patients with reduced uh, performance uh, um, status, and as you can see here in this meta-analysis from 2012, from Rossi uh, covering uh, a bit more than 450 uh, um, patients, uh, comparing cisplatin-based uh, combination versus carboplatin-based uh, uh, combinations. If you look at the uh, Kaplan-Meier curves in the middle of this um, slide, you do see that um, as, uh, for the overall survival, but also for the progression-free survival, there is no real difference uh, between the two platinum um, agents. So the median overall survival, and this is already a figure that is worthwhile to memorize uh, for um, cisplatin or carboplatin plus etoposide, uh, is about, uh, between nine and 10 months. And um, we will need this uh, to compare the benefit of immunotherapies. If you look at the forest plots on the um, right side, um, you can um, see that for the overall point, FM, um, uh, point estimates, um, for overall survival, but also for progression-free um, survival, there is no clear ten tendency favoring either carboplatin or cisplatin. But if you look at the subgroups, you see that patients younger than 70 years seem to benefit more from cisplatin. So at least the point estimate is um, favoring cisplatin, the 95% uh, confidence intervals 
are somehow um, crossing the 1.0 line. And the same is true for extensive um, disease. So there seems to be a benefit uh, or at least a tendency towards um, cisplatin etoposide. Um, other partners for the uh, platinum um, um, uh, duplet uh, have been explored. Um, so there has been a meta-analysis from um, China, also uh, including Chinese uh, studies. In total, 12 uh, studies with a bit more than uh, 2,000 uh, patients, as you can see on the left side. And it compared uh, cisplatin urinotecan versus cisplatin etoposide. Um, there was no benefit for progression-free survival and overall response rate uh, not uh, depicted here. You can see uh, at least uh, some benefit in the meta-analysis for the one-year and two-year overall um, survival um, rates um, indicated in the forest uh, plots. Um, another option could be the... Um, combination cisplatin plus oral um, topotecan, as you can um, see here. Uh, this was uh, explored in a randomized control uh, trial by um, Eckhart and colleagues that has been published already in 2006, uh, 200, uh, 784 uh, patients. And as you can see here, looking at the Kaplan-Meier curve, there is no clear difference between the two um, combinations. Finally, um, there has been the work by Lee uh, published in 2009, also in RCT, comparing carboplatin plus gemcitabine versus uh, platin, um, or, um, sorry, um, um, cisplatin um, plus etoposide. As you can see here, cisplatin was somehow um, a lower dose. Usually uh, we, we take um, or choose 80 milligram per um, square uh, meter. Um, but in this combination compared to carboplatin uh, with the uh, area under the curve of five plus gemcitabine, um, uh, again, and to very uh, much matching cohorts. There were no difference in terms of the overall survival and the kaplan meyer curve. So this could be an option uh, for patients with a reduced performance uh, um, um, status, as you will see later in the algorithm um, of the ESMO guideline. So here's my first question, a warm-up question. Uh, I would be very interested to know or to get to know from you what you use for chemotherapy only. So chemotherapy without um, immunotherapy at your department. Do you only use option one, cisplatin and toposide? Do you use both combinations, cisplatin and carboplatin pl uh, plus etoposide? Or do you also use other uh, platinum partners? So please um, click your option. This is just to get an um, impression of uh, what, what you are using in your institutions. There is no clear right or wrong answer. So we will wait for the results. OK, so the majority, as you can see, uh, does use uh, cisplatin etoposide or carboplatin etoposide. That's the same as, as we do in, in our department. In very rare cases, we may tend to option um, free. OK, so that's, that's good to, to get an impression. And maybe we can discuss this briefly at the end of this um, section. OK, so let's continue. And um, well, some, some years ago, there has been a set also in small cell lung cancer, a major breakthrough. And this has been um, um, by the uh, introduction um, of um, checkpoint inhibitors uh, into the systemic uh, treatment of extensive disease, small cell lung cancer, as you can see here. And as uh, we may know 
uh, um, all the different groups of checkpoint inhibitors that have been uh, approved or that are used uh, have been used within clinical um, trials. So we do know the PD-1 inhibitors, we do know the PDL1 inhibitors, we also are aware of the CTL4 uh, and inhibitors. And uh, currently in uh, Europe, um, there are two um, substances to checkpoint inhibitors that have been uh, approved uh, for the uh, by uh, uh, EMA, the European Medicines uh, Agency, for the treatment of extensive disease, um, uh, small cell uh, lung cancer. First substance is uh, atezolizumab, and this has been tested. Um, and published uh, first in 2018. There has been an uh, update uh, of the outcome data most recently um, this year. This has been the Empower 1133 uh, uh, trial, including uh, 403 um, patients. And there were two regimens, two arms tested in a one-to-one -one, uh, design, carboplatin plus, uh, plus etaposide plus atezolizumab compared um, to the um, standard chemotherapy only uh, treatment carboplatin interposide plus placebo. And very important, uh, there has been also a maintenance uh, uh, therapy with atezolizumab or for the second arm, for the control arm with uh, pl uh, placebo. And as you can see um, here in the Kaplan-Meier uh, curve, there has been quite an um, uh, impressive or significant prolonging on the, uh, of the uh, one-year overall survival. We remember the nine to um, 10 months for the cisplatin etoposide combination here, it's 12.3. Month and the same has been shown for the other substance, dovalumab, also a PL1 um, checkpoint inhibitor. Um, this trial enrolled 805 patients. Uh, it had, uh, in fact, three arms. So it was dovalumab plus platinum plus etoposide. So the um, um, researchers could choose between cisplatin and carboplatin. Um, it also included the, um, this was the second arm, the combination dovalumab plus the CDLA4 um, checkpoint inhibitor trimilimumab plus uh, the platinum etoposide combination. And as a control arm, that was platinum plus etoposide, again with a maintenance uh, uh, therapy with dovalumab in both arms, uh, including Dovalumab, so arm one and two. And again, there has been a significant improvement. Um, and again, something like uh, three months overall, one year overall survival benefit, as you can see here in the um, overall um, survival uh, Kaplan-Meier curves. And also, uh, most recently, there has been an update of the outcome data and the dovolumab uh, data seem, the, the curves seem to, to run a bit better than the atezolizumab, but uh, I, I think both substances are so, uh, used frequently. Also this um, year, I cannot move forward. There we go. Um, there has been uh, a meta-analysis uh, presenting also the data for other checkpoint inhibitors that have not uh, uh, been uh, approved. Um, so for example, nivolumab or the um, uh, pemprolizumab, keynote uh, 604. Um, study, as you can um, see, but this just depicts the uh, various outcomes, uh, parameters, uh, overall survival, progression-free survival, and overall response rate. So far in Europe, there's only approval um, for atezolizumab and dovalumab as partner in the systemic uh, treatment of um, 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 extensive disease, small cell lung cancer. Very interesting, um, the adverse events. So it's not only about efficacy, but it's, it's also about uh, adverse events um, uh, when it comes to uh, treat patients with extensive disease, small cell lung cancer. And as you can uh, see here, um, there 
uh, in the pooled analysis of this uh, systematic review, there were no clear or significant differences showing any um, um, extended harms in the experimental arms, including uh, or enrolling patients um, receiving uh, checkpoint uh, inhibitors. So um, all treatments were um, received quite favorable according to this meta-analysis. So here's my second question, again, to uh, obtain a picture from you, what you use at your local institutions. Um, so um, the, the question is option one. Um, if you um, um, are planning to deliver uh, an immunochem chemotherapy and extensive disease small cell lung cancer outside of clinical trials, um, do you only use atezolizumab as a combination partner or option one, or option two, do you only use dovalumab or do you use both, any of those, or do you also use other checkpoint inhibitors uh, with this combination, again, outside of clinical trials? So um, I would like to know how you treat your routine care patients. Please click your answers and um, within a couple of seconds, we will see the results. Okay, here we, we see it again, the majority favors any of the two substances, so of artezolizumab and dovalumab. Uh, it's pretty much the same uh, um, here. Jack, how about you in, in Paris? Do we have any favorite or do you use both or do you have a strategy to, to choose one of uh, the two substances in your patients? Uh, the, the, the question is complex in France today because uh, as uh, recently we have the, both drugs, uh, Atezo or Durva, but uh, the reimbursement is not so clear and uh, we, have, uh, we have to wait a long time today to, to consider or not if it will be finally reimbursed because uh, our authorities consider this finally maybe some futility that is just two months of uh, improved over survival. And if I discuss about uh, Derva versus Atezo, I think it's difficult to answer the question. Uh, the first one uh, with Atezo is clearly a, a randomized placebo controlled st study. Why the second one with Derva is interesting because we can, we, we can give a four to six cycle of uh, cisplatinum uh, uh, etoposide uh, treatment that is not possible in the, in the Derva uh, uh, trial. Well, in my uh, in my mind, I think there is more, much more. I think uh, metastasis, the brain metastasis disease in the uh, Durva trial than in the uh, Atezo trial. But I'm not sure that maybe uh, Dragonau or uh, or Torsten, you you want to comment about that? Well, it is true in Durvalumab there were two uh, parts of of a, a pathology of brain metastasis, one asymptomatic and the other one treated, corresponded to treatment prior to inclusion in the study. While in Empower, there was only a portion of patients with asymptomatic brain metastasis. Do you have, do you have a choice between the two drugs or, or Tosten or really not, not really a choice? It will be- Well, we have a, a choice. Let's <laughs> Yeah, we have, uh, uh, we can freely choose between uh, both drugs uh, here in Germany. Uh, well, we, we haven't seen in, in real life environment any difference in terms of the, or perceived any differences in terms of the rate of brain metastasis uh, under both, both treatments. I did remember between the two trials, uh, the, the, the interval between uh, the, the treatments uh, in the, in the maintenance phase uh, at Zolizumab and Durva, it was every two weeks or every three weeks in the two trials? I think as far as I remember, it was every uh, three weeks, so not in the, in the two trials. Yeah. Okay, Dragana, you, you can confirm or not sure? <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't hear always well, but uh, as far as I understood, you have asked about uh, the um, interval between yes. two doses in maintenance. It is three yes. weeks for 
at the end for the for, for the two trials. Okay. Okay, right. Well. Okay, so um, let's let's move uh, on. Here you can see the the guideline algorithm for the extensive disease treatment or uh, therapy of small cell lung cancer from, from the uh, recent uh, ESMO guideline update from April of um, this, this year. Um, here you can see according to performance uh, status and of course very important uh, according to contraindications or no contraindications for immunotherapy. Uh, um, the various options that we have just briefly um, this discussed um, here. And also uh, we have to be aware if we have patients with a poor performance uh, status with a high number of comorbidities with a high symptom load, of course, there's also best supportive care uh, as a proper uh, treatment option or uh, better the introduction of palliative care um, only. So um, the blue part we have covered already. So that's, uh, as again, that's the major backbone of systemic uh, of uh, uh, therapy of small cell uh, lung cancer and extensive um, disease. That's the systemic uh, um, part. Um, here you can see the um, almost matching NCCN guideline algorithm. And it's of course important to recognize an extensive disease that we cannot always start from the very beginning uh, with systemic therapy because sometimes we have localized imminent uh, uh, complications that we need to treat first, like uh, superior uh, renal calver uh, uh, syndrome, um, lower obstructions, or a very uh, complicated bone uh, metastasis. So we have to keep this in mind as well. So maybe we can use some minutes to discuss this first section, the um, systemic therapies in extensive disease, uh, small lung cancer, maybe there are any questions from the audience, and so far I do not see uh, one in the chat, but maybe Tragana and Jack, you can comment or, or ask. Um, um, okay, will you, you begin? Okay. Could you begin, uh, Dragana? Uh, yes, I can, to begin about commenting this uh, treatment, you mean, on the, this prior, prior part. Well, I can just say that uh, these newly uh, uh, published uh, ESMO guidelines have allowed now in the first uh, uh, line of treatment of the differences, first of all, regarding the performance status, which is very important to have in mind, and also regarding the comorbidities. So for example, if uh, performance status is due to uh, poor, due to small cell lung cancer, and we know how efficient chemotherapy plus or minus immunotherapy can be, then we will choose to treat with chemotherapy plus minus uh, immunotherapy depending on the case. And if, uh, for example, performance status is due to uh, poor performance status due to comorbidities, then we should go uh, rather for best supportive care, palliative care. That's one of the comments. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I want you to clarify some points. So, because we discuss uh, every day, or not every day, but frequently the, the question during the tumor board, and we, we progressively uh, change our, our opinion. At the beginning, we did not give chemotherapy in patient maybe for with P3 due to the disease. And after, after discussion right. between, uh, uh, between other colleagues, finally we, we were more, uh, uh, more, um, uh, more uh, easy to give also in this patient the, the immunotherapy, considering that the, the chemotherapy will, leave, will uh, improve the PS to three, to two, or, or, or zero, or one. So we don't want to delay the immunotherapy. It's what you confirm or not, not what you said? There are cases that have a performance status, for example, three, but uh, if it's really a bulky disease, if it's a huge tumor burden, 
burden, then it is easy to expect uh, that it will be better with chemotherapy, with treatment. So we also give a chemotherapy uh, some uh, because now we don't have still the opportunity to give a chemotherapy with immunotherapy uh, for all patients, only for selected. Okay. So I am in favor of applying chemotherapy because patient doesn't have to, anything to lose. And on the other side, we have seen patients with small cell lung cancer, which is really extensive disease, they respond sometimes within a few days and they are better. So to give them the chance to be treated further on. Because some colleagues uh, finally sometimes delay at the second or third uh, uh, cycles, the introduction in, of immunotherapy. And uh, uh, Benjamin Bess from Gustave Roussy have made a, a little fast to trial uh, with induction, with spare three patient, with induction with uh, two cycles of uh, chemotherapy, then immunotherapy. And uh, by this way, finally, he said he just select the good patient, but it is not sure that is the good eye issue. So if you want to give uh, immunotherapy if possible, if possible without comorbidity, finally give it at the, at the, first, uh, at the first cycle. You agree, Tarsten, too? Yeah, at, at our departments, it's usually individual uh, decisions. So I think age is also an, an factor uh, that is not uh, shown here in this, this diagram. Uh, but it may somehow also influence the, the performance status, but even sometimes you have younger uh, patients with very uh, well, uh, far advanced um, stage uh, four small cell lung cancer. So where we are always discussing, do we already introduce um, um, the immuno uh, at the first um, uh, cycle or introduce it at second or, or third uh, a cycle as Tragana has um, 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 has told us. So, um, and I think there are uh, rationals for 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 both uh, uh, approaches. And at our department, it's it's an individual decision that we try to find uh, in a shared decision approach with, with the patient. And, and did you experience uh, experience it bad bad uh, bad. Uh... Uh, issue with the occurrence of paraneoplastic uh, uh, um, disease, so just, just as neurologic, uh, paraneoplastic neurologic disease after introduction of immunotherapy. It's in my not, not yet. So, so we haven't seen uh, higher rates or accurations of existing uh, paraneoplastic uh, syndromes uh, under immunotherapy. Uh, uh, of course, sometimes there were some, some related side effects of immunotherapy, uh, but um, this, this was not more prone in uh, paraneoplastic Not, not especially yes. paraneoplastic uh, yes. disease. Okay. okay, right. Maybe there's other question or Dragana, no um, question? Well, maybe when you speak about paraneoplastic uh, syndromes, maybe we should mention about uh, immunotherapy, about uh, some risk. Uh, for immunotherapy uh, giving to patients with paraneoplastic neurological symptoms in also in extensive uh, disease, small cell lung cancer. And just to point to their new data, for example, that there are in fact uh, two different kinds of autoantibodies. One is uh, in fact to intracellular uh, onconeuronal antigens and the other one is to synaptic to surface uh, neuronal um, receptors. And there is a difference also regarding uh, treatment with immunotherapy because it is considered that, for example, in the second part for synaptic surface uh, oncoproteins, uh, immunotherapy can achieve good response rates and, can, and in these cases, it cannot worsen too much paraneoplastic neurological symptoms. And also it cannot provoke uh, uh, if there, they were not present, just uh, it were immune adverse event to uh, neurological symptoms. But for the first one, it is really a problem. And just to underline that now there is a trend and there is a suggestion to uh, better survey, uh, make surveillance over paraneoplastic neurological symptoms in a, a population of small cell lung cancers if immunotherapy is considered to be given to them. Okay, it's a very important point. Regarding this question. Yes, very, very 
very important. And I think for, for that as I think uh, as, as a whole, it's it's rare in, in single institutions. I think we, we do need multi-centric uh, assessments for, for that, ideally in a prospective uh, approach. So I would suggest uh, to, to move on uh, yeah. with the next um, topic, and that's consolidation thoracic radio uh, therapy after the completion of the first line um, systemic um, treatment. I would just briefly like to highlight the existing evidence um, shown here in the meta-analysis by Palmer and co-workers. It included, um, it was, this was published in 2016, the two um, um, RCTs available at those times. So the first one is from, from Jeremic from 1999. Uh, this compared um, uh, consolidation uh, thoracic radiotherapy. At those times, they used uh, 54 um, gray of the um, primary tumor, the residuum, and the patients that had a response after the first line uh, treatment plus the mediastinal. Uh, um, structures compared to no consolidation uh, thoracic radiotherapy, but without prophylactic cranial irradiation. Um, the second uh, study from um, Slotman, this was from 2015, almost 500 patients uh, enrolled in this RCT, Netherlands, UK, and um, single centers from um, Belgium. Um, this uh, use a similar uh, design, but um, as the radiation uh, dose, it was um, 30 uh, grays um, total um, divided into uh, 10 um, fractions, but there in both arms, prophylactic cranial irradiation was, was used. Um, Slotman um, didn't see any significant differences in both arms for the one-year overall survival, but for the two-year overall survival, and that there was a significant improvement also for consolidation and thoracic radiotherapy arm for the progression-free survival. As you can see here in the um, forest plots, if you pool both studies, uh, you have significant uh, effects favoring consolidation thoracic radiotherapy. After 2016 and 2017, there was another study, an RCT by Gore, 97 patients, uh, which had uh, quite similar um, design to the Slotman RCT. And um, again, they only looked at one year overall survival, but there was no significant difference but there was a significant improvement of the progression-free uh, survival. This is not covered um, here. Um, this is why um, um, consolidation for radiotherapy is included in the various guidelines. Here you see the NCCN uh, guideline. It's also included um, for uh, in the recent ESMO guideline algorithm. Um, only for the chemotherapy only systemic uh, regimens, as you can um, see here, with a response um, to carboplatin etoposide. And this was the criteria also in the uh, named uh, um, trials. And um, there is no, in the ESMO guideline, no recommendation to introduce consolidation thoracic radiotherapy uh, after the completion of the um, carboplatin etoposide or cisplatin etoposide uh, plus atezo or duvalumab um, first line um, treatment. This is different in the um, ASTRO guideline that has been published um, last um, year. Um, they have clear uh, recommendations on consolidation thoracic radio um, therapy. Um, they do strongly recommend it for uh, patients with extensive disease, small cell lung cancer that have shown a response to chemotherapy alone. Um, they recommend um, the uh, Slotman um, um, radiotherapy um, um, regimen with um, 30 uh, gray total dose divided into 10 um, fractions. 
Um, and um, they have also, as you can see um, at the very bottom, that's the recommendation four, they have a conditional recommendation to introduce uh, consolidation thoracic radiotherapy in patients that have a response after chemotherapy and immunotherapy. So that's uh, differing from the ESMO recommendation. I think this is something that we can briefly um, discuss. So, and this is my question to you as the, the audience, uh, extensive disease, small cell lung cancer patient that have had a response after first line immunochemotherapy, would you recommend, uh, recommend consolidation thoracic uh, radiotherapy in those patients or would you abstain uh, from consolidation radiotherapy? Please um, choose your option. So we are waiting the results from your vote. So as you can see here, the majority is favoring the Astro recommendations. So it's two thirds and one third would more uh, follow the ESMO uh, recommendations. The Astro recommendations are based on um, expert opinion only. So far, there is no real evidence uh, available that could um, answer uh, this question uh, on an evidence uh, basis. So I think we can already start the discussion on uh, consolidating thoracic radio uh, therapy. And um, of course, please type in your uh, questions into the chat um, um, to, to make our discussions more uh, interactive. Uh, but I would be really keen to know, Jack and Dragana, what, what do you think? Would you more follow ESMO? Would you more follow ASCO? And if you, uh, and not sorry, Astro, uh, Astro uh, but it has been endorsed by, by ASCO, this, this guideline. Um, so, what, what would you recommend? And if you follow uh, the ASTRO guideline, what would you do with the maintenance therapy? Would you start the maintenance therapy after completion uh, of the um, um, consolidating radiotherapy or would you uh, do it in, in parallel? Um, well, may I then answer? First of all, uh, there are some uh, conditions uh, when to apply this radiotherapy, in my opinion. So, for example, I would like to apply radiotherapy of, of the chest in those who responded to treatment with a small or no extreme, other extremostatic sites. And uh, so to, to have a low burden of tumor. The second thing is uh, performance status of the patient the age of the patient. For younger patients, maybe it would be much more convenient. And as for the timing of chest radiotherapy, maybe I would uh, prefer to give it first, if I consider it so justified, uh, and to make a pause, to make a break of immunotherapy, and then continue maintenance immunotherapy. That's what might be considered, in my opinion. I, I'm, I completely agree that the opinion of Dragana. And finally, I, 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 want, I answer that I, I did not recommend because we discussed a lot about that, but finally there are very, very few patients that are, uh, that are fit for this uh, treatment. It's why in real practice, it's not so frequent to, to really discuss uh, the, uh, the, uh, the radiotherapy at the end of uh, uh, um, uh, the four, four, four cycles of chemotherapy plus immunotherapy. It's why I, I do not recommend. I discuss rather than co recommend. Yeah, we, we do pretty much the, the same uh, here at our institution, and I completely follow uh, uh, your um, uh, um, 
recommendations and also justifications of your recommendations. Um, so uh, if, if we start uh, combo uh, treatment, we will uh, we would then continue with with maintenance uh, and therapy, but but wouldn't do uh, consolidating therapy. And as you you said, um, I, I think that the fitness of the patient for for this uh, treatment is, is highly uh, important, um, and you have to to choose it uh, wisely. So there's, I see one question in, in the chat, uh, considering brain evaluation, we will touch this topic in the next part uh, of, of our webinar. Jack, sorry, I interrupted you. Okay, so there was a question. So I, can, I think you, you can continue. Uh... Okay, so the next part, um, as, as asked for, is prophylactic uh, cranial uh, irradiation. And, uh, well, there, there's been quite a, a debate uh, about this over the, the last uh, um, years. And, well, um, the, uh, in my mind, overarching uh, question is, uh, is there an overall uh, survival gain? So that is clearly the aim of prophylactic cranial radiation to prevent the development uh, of uh, um, uh, brain metastasis, which are clearly uh, uh, a really uh, negative prognostic um, factor. Or um, how about the risk of prophylactic uh, cranial evaluation, the, the side effects, and namely neuropsychological uh, sequelae? As you can see here, we also know about uh, weakness of the uh, peripheral uh, muscles, especially of the uh, lower extremities, um, as, as a side uh, effect. So, uh, weighing uh, potential benefits uh, against uh, potential harms is, is a very important uh, question. And I think uh, this has been uh, also um, uh, considered uh, in the recommendations that I will show you on the, the next uh, um, um, slides. Um, there, there has been, of course, some, some evidence that uh, led to the recommendation of uh, prophylactic cranial evaluation. The first study, I'm going to show you the detailed um, designs, has been by uh, Ope, uh, hopefully I've pronounced it correctly, uh, already published in 1999, including also limited but also extensive disease uh, patients showing uh, a benefit. A clear benefit of prophylactic cranial evaluation in terms of overall um, survival. Um, there has been this uh, Slotman study that has also been published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2007, also um, favoring prophylactic cranial um, evaluation, but and this has been a valid point of criticism. Um, the staging after the completion uh, of the first line treatment has not included uh, MRI staging of the uh, brain. So they may have missed brain uh, metastasis. And there has been this uh, study more recently from 2017 from Japan, from Takahashi, uh, that compared prophylactic crane duration versus um, uh, surveillance um, of the brain by uh, MRI, and they have um, shown similar outcomes for, for both uh, arms. And uh, another uh, discussion that is currently going on, how about um, the effects of hippocampal sparing prophylactic cranial uh, irradiation because this may significantly reduce the neuro neuropsychological adverse um, events, um, so less harm, but at the same time less control in the spared regions. So if you do not uh, prophylactic irradiate uh, certain regions like the hippocampal regions, then there's of course a higher risk for brain metastasis in this, this region. So these are the questions I think that we should um, this, discuss. Uh, here are the recommendations uh, from um, ASTRO. They are pretty much matching with ESMO. So I've uh, just shown you 
um, those. And here we will also um, focus um, on limited um, disease. So first of all, for the staging of patients with small cell lung cancer, Astro recommends MRI brain uh, um, staging. This is what we also do here. Um, they recommend um, to perform it every three months in the first year and then every uh, six months at our institution, we, we do it every three months uh, for, for two uh, um, years. Second recommendations is that in stage one, patients with small cell uh, lung cancer, they do not uh, recommend, but this is also a conditional, only a conditional recommendation for lactic cranial iteration, but instead uh, uh, favor um, surveillance, frequent surveillance by brain um, MRI as an alternative. Uh, for limited um, disease stage two and three disease, there is a clear recommendation for prophylactic cranial uh, evaluation. That's what we also follow here in our institution. And at, um, you can see the um, doses um, for limited um, disease, 25 gray in total and 10 um, fractions. Um, this is what they recommend for extensive um, disease. There is a strong uh, recommendation after response to chemotherapy um, um, to have a shared decision uh, making with the patient whether he would uh, favor prophylactic cranial irradiation or um, surveillance only by brain MRI on a frequent uh, basis. In our institution, we usually follow or favor the latter um, option. Um, and as the radiation regimen um, they use, if the patient selects prof uh, prophylactic radiation, 25 gray uh, divided into 10 uh, fractions, or an alternative scheme is 20 gray in total and five fractions, so we have higher doses per fractions, but less um, fractions. So these are the, the recommendations, and um, I think, um, there, you know, yes, there are some questions just to get your opinion, and then we can uh, go back and discuss the, the recommendations uh, just to get to know what uh, your practices um, are. So we start with very early disease, small cell uh, lung cancer. Uh, are, uh, uh, patient with uh, surgical resection, um, R0, uh, as you can see here, in this patient, would you recommend prophylactic cranial irradiation to prevent brain metastasis, or would you recommend routine brain surveillance by MRI only? Okay, we are waiting for the results. Here they are. So again, one third, two thirds, two thirds uh, follow the Astro recommendations. One third uh, would still recommend prophylactic cranial irradiation. Jogana and Jack, what would be your um, option? For me, uh, for early disease, I would just recommend routine brain surveillance with MR. Yeah, it's the same in the, is this particular context with a patient with res resection, early disease, yeah. uh, with a good, uh, <clears throat> good uh, um, courage in the, in the medicinum, uh, just uh, chemotherapy, no radiation in the, in the thorax, and prefer MRI surveillance, clearly. Yeah, same here at our um, department. <coughs> So the next uh, scenario also covered in the recommendation is now extensive disease, small cell lung cancer with a good response after first line uh, therapy. Would you recommend 
prophylactic renal evaluation, or would you recommend routine brain surveillance uh, MRI? Please, as soon as the toolbox open, cast your vote. Okay, we're waiting for the results. <clears throat> okay, so it's somehow divided with the, uh, well, uh, some more uh, favoring uh, PCI um, and uh, almost 45% with brain surveillance. Again, Dragana and Jack, what would be your opinion on that? Well, I think this should be shared decision-making with the patient because you must uh, just uh, put on the table all the risk of cognitive, for example, disorders. They are all younger than, uh, for example, according to ESMO, it is uh, less than 75 years, but also we have seen a lot of complications neurocognitive in patients over 60 years of age. And also, uh, we should then make a decision with our patient uh, together to share the responsibility. I think that's the way we should do. Yes, okay. it's, it's probably not the, the better situation in which I will recommend radiation. Probably a patient with localized disease, high burden, uh, a good response to radiochemotherapy, Probably is this in this context that I will recommend uh, irradiation, not mm -hmm. in extensive disease, older patient, and uh, um, probably not a very good prognosis. Yeah, so we here uh, follow also Jack's approach, and uh, of course also Trugana's approach. Of course, we would discuss it uh, openly with, with the patient, both options. Uh, but if the patients ask us, what would you do? We usually would tend to uh, for our, our brain surveillance uh, and MRI. Okay, so. Um, um, last question uh, for today um, is uh, patients, uh, small cell lung cancer, first line therapy, your opinion on hippocampal um, sparing, uh, prophylactic cranial uh, irradiation. So would you spare out the hippocampal region or not? Please quickly, as we are almost finished with uh, time, please cast your um, vote. And uh, I could already uh, state that the evidence for that is still lacking. There has been one trial um, demonstrated, but not published um, yet, uh, that could not show an added value of sparing out the hippocampal uh, region, but other trials are ongoing. So final question to you, Tragana and uh, Jack, what, what are your um, opinions on that? Well, I would not recommend hippocampal sparing, uh, especially in the light of these newly published results of Bell Derbos and the associates, because they have shown that uh, this failed to confirm that uh, this sparing would do benefit for a patient. Okay. The same uh, last last year, I we I was recommended. This year, less recommended, and because uh, this uh, last uh, trial is very well done and very it is also very clear, and uh, also because uh, there are some uh, relapse in brain metastasis uh, with small cell lung carcinoma in the hippocampus, and finally the discussion uh, in the present time is those patients with small cell lung cancer 
could, uh, will profit to stereotoxic uh, brain, brain irradiation rather than hippocampal sparing radiation. Yeah, so it's good to see that there is a high level of homogeneity uh, on that uh, um, topic uh, on the European um, level. Um, so I would like to spare out the past on relapse therapy. I think you get the uh, material um, to see it as a matter of uh, um, time. And I would like to, to summarize that in extensive disease, uh, small cell lung cancer, the mainstay uh, treatment in patients with for that is uh, clearly chemoimmunotherapy, followed by maintenance immunotherapy. Um, um, you may consider uh, thoracic radiotherapy in chemotherapy patients only with a good response uh, that are fit for that. There should be routine brain surveillance MRIs included into the um, staging. Nevertheless, relapse or progressive disease is most likely very important. Uh, also as a take home message, there is a higher risk uh, of, or high risk of metachronous uh, a non-small cell lung cancer and NC SLCSC uh, patients who have survived more than uh, two years. So please be aware of, of this. Um, and in all small cell lung cancer patients, especially in those with extensive disease, do not forget about the smoking uh, cessation and other supportive measures uh, for the uh, set for the relapse part. And uh, the last uh, bullet point, you will find some uh, slides that we have not uh, discussed. Um, today. So I would like um, to close and say thank you here from um, Berlin. And Jack, it's, and Dragana, it's your last words. Well, okay, Jack. Go, 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 go. I would just like to uh, say uh, that uh, we have tried to answer all these questions that we could answer in this short time. There are many things that can be again discussed about some other points, but I hope still that uh, all the participants uh, will benefit and that we met their expectations. And just to say goodbye to all. Yes, thank you. It's it's a, a real pleasure to to make these two webinar with uh, Torsten and Dragana. And clearly, we learn from the, these two webinars for the future. And I will. We will probably uh, give you uh, the opportunity to other webinar, maybe with shorter question, but to have a long time to discuss shortened shortened question, and to to have many time to sit to get, uh, uh, all over the year with the maybe ten or twelve or thirty seminar webinar in the years with the uh, uh, thoracic assembly, long, long thoracic uh, cancer assembly. Because I think the, 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 the exercise is interesting and the exchange are very interesting. So thank you so much. <laughs>